welcome to do 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 bo do 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 no wait do, no, first no, do no harm do no pime do no rhymo do no that doesn't work okay that's well, do well, steve novel writing month do n- n- no no rhymo was national novel writing month so this so, is Dune Dune Steve Steve podcast podcasting recording month. Okay, Dune Steve podcast. No, wait. It's, it's there, what's the shortened version? Do po remo. Are you sure? Do Dune Steve, Steve podcast, podcast re- re- recording, recording month. Do do po remo. Po yeah. Re mo. Yes. Do po remo. All month long. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it for reals now. For for me, if I had to place blame on one reason, and I don't think there's just one reason, but the biggest reason I think, and I hear you complain about it all the time, is cost. Yeah. Movies cost way too much right now. And a part of it is, you know, ticket prices are way up, but another part is just the 3Dification of things. You know, so so they can have the extra charge to rent the glasses for two hours. Gosh, can you believe that they want to charge you to rent the glasses now? They want to put a surcharge on your ticket for that? Oh, that was unbelievable when I heard that. I was just like, you people can die. I will never go to a 3D movie again. This summer, I was in a toy aisle and they had these Transformers Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime and Bumblebee masks that you could wear that had built-in 3D glasses. You could wear them to the theater and wear these masks <laughs> while you watched the movie. And at first I was always like, wow, hey, that's interesting. You go, Hasbro. Let's see, make some more money. But then I realized the theater is still going to charge a kid wearing this thing over his face the full price that they would charge, despite the fact that this guy spent 15 extra dollars for <laughs> an Optimus Prime mask. And then the the biggest loser is the person who sees Transformers Dark at the Moon. Yes, that's definitely the case. But that that's my biggest reason. It just costs too much. We've got theaters around us that uh, do like bargain nights. Like there's a, a first run theater that does a five dollar all shows, well all two D shows on Tuesdays, and popcorn and drink, small popcorn and small drink are a dollar each. Really. I did not know That's that. She and I went and saw War Horse last Tuesday oh, there. Cool. I'm and have it to cost start. $7 for a ticket and a drink and a... Wow. I'm going to have to start um, doing that more often. Those showings always sell out and the line is always super long because people want to go to the movies. Yeah. I There, there were so many movies this year that I didn't see in the theater that I would have seen. But it's just, it becomes difficult. And part of it is just, you know, we've gotten older and we have responsibilities and things. And and then the video window or whatever you call it, the window before it hits video is so short now that there are movies that came out in October that are already, that were already available before 2012 on video. But uh, the the other thing, besides the the price and, and, you know, the 3D thing, but 3D goes hand in hand with prices. Yeah, just... 3D is the reason why. I mean, half the reason why the price is so high. Now you, it costs as much as it does to go to a freaking like NBA game to go to a movie. The other reason I wouldn't want to go is because there's just so many a holes, so many people <laughs> that are there to dick around or to text or to have a good time and that. And you know, I don't know how many people are dissuaded from going to the theater because of that. When my niece and I went to see War Horse, there were a lot of really, really old people there. And it's good to see something like that. But, of course, War Horse is a throwback yeah. to a movie from the 60s or the 50s. A movie it's a f- movie set in World War I. Most you know, teenagers these days don't even know that there was a World War I. That's true. But that's, that's not what they <laughs> sold the movie on. It, old fashioned. They don't make them like that anymore. Kind of filmmaking is what it was. And, you know, it's rare that there's a movie you can take your grandma to. I mean, for me, I would first have to find a shovel. But second, yeah, there's not a lot of movies that we would enjoy together. Uh, But that's just me. I think for the vast majority of film goers, the two deterrents are price and quality. Yeah. 
And and quality, I think, is what we wanted to talk about. Quality is what we're talking about. That quality has dropped off hugely, and it's all spectacle now. They're trying to sell all their films on, hey, we've got insane amounts of CG. We spent $200 million just on the computer graphics. Not even paying the worthless stars that we got that nobody cares about, the $20 million that we paid them as well. You know, it's like, we've got more explosions. We've got faster cuts than ever. We've got 3D. It's all about spectacle. And spectacle just, it's not worth anything. Once people have seen like three spectacle movies, they're done. You can't spectacle them anymore. Nothing is spectacular anymore after that. We were just talking about uh, The Fugitive and how back when uh, that came out, I I remember how I, I worked in a video store. And I saw that movie and then later I pulled out the movie when it came out on video and I put it on just so I could watch that train wreck again because that was such the the world's most amazing sequence ever put on film at the time. It was just amazing because it was all there was a lot of computer graphics involved in it and all that. Wait, were there really? I thought there was. Was there not? Oh, I, I thought it was all pretty much practical and they they had like a stunt man jump off. Of, well, OK, I don't know. I don't know. It was right at the time it like Jurassic Park and all those were. Computer graphics uh, were just coming in, but it was just this amazing sequence. And we were just saying, yeah, gosh, that was so cool. Of course, now nobody cares. Like we put that on now. Would we think it was neat? Would we be all excited about it? Because like every movie has that plus an alien spaceship and 500 elephants running through the screen because just train wreck like that with one guy trying to get out of the way. That's not enough. They got to take it to the hundredth degree blow up 15 buildings and have a giant robot fly through and cut it so fast that you can't tell what's going on. Then that spectacle, you know, no, I mean, nobody cares about a spectacle anymore. It's just not neat except for the 10 year old kid who's just finally getting allowed to see PG 13 movies or something for the first time or five year old kid these days, I guess getting allowed to see the PG 13 movies for the first time. And, you know, they're all excited. Oh, wow, I can't believe it. This is going to be the greatest movie since Green Lantern came out. But really, you think a five-year-old would even give a crap about a spectacle? By by the time this kid is five, he's seen all the Transformers movies or he's seen <laughs> the Star Wars prequels or he's seen whatever the equivalent is, Mr. Popper's Penguins, <laughs> something like that. I, but, you know, maybe I'm just being too hard on a five-year-old, but I, I can't see a 21st century five-year-old not having been spoon-fed that stuff all his life so that he thinks that's what movies are. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know. Say, to be continued. To be continued. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. As if anyone would want to copy this. See you next time. Get, see wait, you, see wait, you wait. tomorrow. Yeah, see you. Uh, Did let I me, let me do that again. I was going to say see you tomorrow, and then you said, so I'll just say, well, I'll see you in hell. Whoa, hey. Probably will. Hey, that was uncalled for. General. Okay, so. Commander uh, Solo told me he'd see me in hell. <laughs> All I said was his tauntaun was going to freeze. Did you decide that was from a robot chicken? No, we thought it probably wasn't, but it would have worked really well as a robot chicken. I don't know if it was or not. <laughs> oh, this is a friendly warning. I, it was really uncalled for. He helped blow up the Death Star. I didn't want him to freeze to death. Like, oh, <laughs> wow.